Welcome to a new week here on the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Michike, co-owner of True North Retirement Advisors, a fee-only fiduciary financial advisory practice managing over $400 million in client assets. If you are five to 10 years on either side of retirement and looking for some daily quick tips to help you on your retirement journey, you are in the right place. So the theme this week is how much car can you actually afford in retirement? Admittedly, this was a really difficult topic for me to cover because it is so nuanced. The right answer of what kind of car you should get, how you should finance that. Should you pay cash? Should you lease it? Should you finance it? It's so nuanced and there definitely is no one size fits all equation. Plus, there's a lot of emotional decision making that comes with buying a car as well. And so it's not always easy to just make a very robotic like financial decision because we get wrapped up in these other aspects of the decision as well. And so I was thinking through like, what's the best way for someone to have a process for making a good decision and making a prudent decision. So that's what I've tried to do here this week is to help you think through the next time you're trying to buy a car how should you approach that decision? And if I can help you with that this week, I will have reached my goal. Now, my husband is a car guy and I learned very early on in our relationship that if you drop the drying towel in the driveway, then you pick it back up and continue drying the car. That is a cardinal sin punishable by death. And he has owned a lot of cars over the years. And for the last, oh goodness, probably for at least the last 10 years, He has like a daily driver and then he has a garage queen and, you know, there's, there's multiple cars at a time, not just one car. And we always seem to have more cars than drivers. Now, if you're not a car person yourself, you might judge that as excessive and indulgent. And I would agree with you, but he loves cars and he always has, and he loves doing the maintenance. We have lots of oil pans in the garage. We have extra wheels and tires, which take up an obscene amount of room in our garage and more drying towels and car cleaning products than most commercial car washes. It's actually something that irritates me when I think about it. I would love to get rid of most, pretty much all of it. And meanwhile, he's always sending me pics for the next car that he wants to buy. And I'm like, no, no, no. With our cars, we've paid cash for cars. We financed cars. The only thing we've never done is lease a car. And so when you're working and, and you know, you're in your career, The car buying decision and deciding how much you can afford and how to pay for it is actually quite a bit different to when you're retired. Some people always pay cash for cars. That's what they've always done. Maybe a lot of people, like if you've done with cars, I feel like if you've done it a certain way, that's kind of how you always do it. So a lot of, if you've leased, if you finance a car, if that's just your MO, then maybe you'll stick with that in retirement. But I would actually argue that you want to rethink the car buying process how much you can afford, how much car you actually need, what your priorities are when it comes to a car. Because most people in retirement, they're not going to drive as much. You can also get away with a more modest car. Like a lot of people when they're working, they think they have to have a certain type of car, maybe not the fanciest car, but you don't want to be driving around in a beater car, especially if you have clients like myself. It would not be a good look if I pulled up to a client's house and the car is just like (laughs) clinking along and has a backfire every time I start it. That would not be a good look. And I don't want that when when I'm retired either because you want a reliable car when you're retired. The last thing you want to do when you're 80 years old is have a broken down car that you need to fix on the side of the road. So the priorities change. And also taking a large lump sum out of your retirement or your investment accounts that may not make paying cash for a car all that palatable. And I would agree that that is not a way to buy a car in retirement because it can have a ripple effect and multiple tax consequences in other areas too. Like I said, reliability is also much more important. So a lot of retirees and a lot of my clients, they tend towards owning newer cars and also not keeping them as long. Like they're not, they're not as inclined to keep a car and drive it for 200 or 250,000 miles, again, because of the reliability aspect. The warranty is also important because if you have a car that's covered by a warranty, that helps to keep your maintenance costs lower. 
But that also means you'll end up paying more for the car because the warranties can get expensive. So the bottom line is, again, it's not an easy decision. It's a very personalized decision, but hopefully we'll be able to walk together through this decision and I can give you some things to consider and think about as you're buying a car, whenever it comes time, whether you're going to buy a car before the end of the year, maybe in the next couple of years. Another thing I would say, I'm not going to talk about this again, but I think a really good idea, if you are needing a car at or around the time you retire, go ahead and buy that car prior to retirement and try to pay cash for it if possible, or put as much down as you possibly can with the idea that once you're retired, you're not going to have that paycheck from your job anymore. You're going to like having a newer car with lower payments or no payments at all. And I think that's one of the smartest things you can do in the last year or two leading up to retirement if you're trying to set yourself up for success in retirement. Now, if you already have newer cars in retirement and it might be five or 10 more years, don't front load that purchase just to buy it before retirement. But if you're getting close to needing a new car, I would argue that you'd be better off buying that while you're still working. So yeah, we'll talk about how much you can afford in retirement, how to make the best decision, whether you're paying cash, financing, or leasing a car. And we'll talk through all of those in detail as well. All right, coming back tomorrow, I'm going to talk about understanding the car market. This is the place to start. What is the current car market like? Because that will help inform what decisions you make and what direction you go, especially when it comes to leasing versus paying cash versus financing a new car purchase. All right, my name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.